Hey, hey, party people. Today, we're going to talk about split complementary color schemes and how to use them in fashion design and illustration. So let's go over some vocabulary, and then we're going to get into application uh, later in this video. First of all, what is split complement? So rewind a tiny bit. What is a complementary color scheme? Complementary color schemes are opposites on the color wheel. Violet's complement is yellow, opposite of the color wheel. Red violet's opposite is yellow green, etc., etc. Okay. Split complements take your first color, green, for example. The opposite of green is red. The complement of green is red. But split complementary color schemes use the neighbors of the complement. So green's split complements are red violet and red orange. And these three together make up a split complementary color scheme. Because of their uneven positions on the color wheel, each color has their own split complements. Okay, so what I mean by that is green's split complements are red violet and red orange. But that doesn't mean that red violets split complements are green and red orange. Okay, if you use my kind of messy but effective cutout, if you start with red violet, red violet split complements are green and yellow. And then red oranges complements are green and blue. So yeah, they share that green, but the trio is different. And the trio, you know, the mood, the vibe, the scheme, everything is different because that third color is different. Okay, so every color has their own two distinct split complements. Previously, when we had discussed complementary colors, okay, and there's that whole video on muting, okay, I'll post a link in the description note. I <laughs> I watch I listen to so many podcasts. I keep wanting to call them the show notes because that's how podcasters say it. They're like, and we're gonna leave you a link in the show notes. <laughs> so I keep saying I keep in my head I keep thinking I'm gonna drop a link for you in the show notes. <laughs> anyway, so I'm gonna drop a link to the muting making neutral colors with complementary color schemes video in the show notes. But basically. When you add the opposite, violet and yellow are opposites, they're complements, you get muted colors. And similar to this, with split complements, you can create what are called near mutes with split complementary colors. So I can mix a red-orange with a blue to create a near mute, which is going to start giving you those, you know, toned down, neutrally colors. And if you go this direction, your neutral colors are going to start looking a little bit warmer because both these colors have yellow in them. And so you have like a more warmer vibe over here. If you start muting with the blue, you're going to get a slightly cooler vibe with your neutrals, just like any other color scheme. A split complementary color scheme is not just these three pure colors, but any variation and combination of tints, shades, tones, and mutes of each of these colors. So if you have a tint of a red-orange, which is red-orange plus white, and if you have a shade of a green, which is green plus black, and if you have a tone of a blue, which is blue plus gray, that's still a split complementary color scheme, okay? When you say split comp, you mean the base of each color is a split complementary color scheme, not just the pure color. So remember when I said we could create near mutes with these three colors, 
Okay. So here is the red with some of the blue green. And here's more of the blue green. And here's even more of the blue green. So you're seeing some of the transition, you see how the colors are working together. And let's try creating near mutes with the green. So that's red with yellow green. That's red with more yellow green. And some more. And some more. So you're seeing the transitioning of the colors becoming more neutral. And as I mentioned before, because there's so much, there's warmer tones in here. The neutrals are warmer, they're mustardy, mustardy, yes, approaching mustardy colors, greenish. And then in here, because the blue-green is so close to blue, you're starting to see more violety, especially in here. So depending on how you want to mute the colors down, what kind of more neutral colors you're going for, you can mix them appropriately. Now, Mixing the yellow green and the blue green, you end up getting a completely different color. And so it kind of veers off the split complementary course. I think at this point, you all know what tints and shades and tones look like. If you don't, I have so many videos. But here is white with this. Okay, so you can just start making so many colors. Here's more white. And you're starting to get these browns. And then, uh, I mean, we're getting kind of close to flesh tone territory, right? At this point, you may be thinking, but Zoe, I've seen your skin tones videos and any video where you start talking about skin tones and you usually start with burnt sienna or burnt umber. Well, yeah, I mean, you only need magenta, yellow, cyan, and black to make any color, okay? If you need proof of that, just look in your printer. Your color printer has cartridges for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and they print out every single color. And I know some color printers have a gray cartridge, and that helps with subtleties, but what is gray? It's like black, okay? Now, when I buy colors like burnt sienna and burnt umber, they're shortcuts, because burnt sienna and burnt umber are basically shades of orange. If I'm going to use a shortcut a lot, like burnt sienna, it is worth it to me to buy the tube of burnt sienna. Okay, but if you want to start painting and you don't have that much money or you don't want to invest a lot of money in, yeah, just get the four, magenta, cyan, yellow, and black. And here's some white with these near mutes. And because of the blue tones, you're creating a pink with more of like a lilac tone because you've got so much blue in there. And then over here, you're getting this dusky blue-gray. So I could do this all day because I love mixing colors and I love making color swatches. However, we don't have all day. If you want a homework assignment from me to explore split complementary color schemes, here's what I would do. If you really want to study color mixing, the only way to do that is to literally mix your colors, okay? So what I would do is I would take, you know, a set of split complements that you like. So start with your purely saturated warm near mutes. In this case, it would be the red plus the yellow green. And then I would do a gradient bar of the cool near mutes. In this case, it would be the red plus the blue green. And then I would do tints of those, shades of those, and tones of those. Tints of the warm near mutes, shades of the warm near mutes, and tones of the warm near mutes. Okay, and really understand how, I mean, you're going to really get where these colors are coming from. You're not going to be able to create every single color variation possible with this chart, but you're going to start getting an idea as to the realm of possibility. And the more you mix your colors and play around and document what colors you mixed in order to get specific colors, the better you're going to have an understanding, the better painter you're going to be, and the better uh, you are going to be at selecting colors and color stories for future design projects. Now, I designed these three dresses, or this one dress, 
And I deliberately chose a skinny stripe and a broad stripe so we could play with color proportion. Because it's not even so much what colors you pick, but how in what quantities you use the colors to get the effect that you want. Like if you use a lot of warm colors, what is that, you know, what effect does that give versus if you use a lot of cool colors? Okay, really quick, because you guys always ask me what I'm using. I'm using uh, Pabeo gouaches in dark cadmium red, and then the middle cadmium yellow, and Windsor and Newton cerulean blue. I've been using the Windsor and Newton for a long time, and I enjoy them a ton. I have a bunch of these. They're great. Pabeos. I've only been using in the past year, maybe? And uh, I've been enjoying them, but they're still new-ish to me. All right, so these three dresses, clearly not the most amazing painting jobs I've ever done, <laughs> but not the point, right? This is a tone of a red. This is, this blue is a shade of a near mute. And this green is a light shade. Just like a little bit of black in there. This is a tint of a yellow green. This is pretty close to just straight up red. And then we have this blue green has like a touch of red and a touch of white in it, okay? To harmonize back with the red a little bit better. And this is a very, like, tons of water added to create this very tint of a blue-green. So this is a tint of a near mute of red and a tone of the yellow-green. So I, I use these words so that you understand what colors I mix together, but essentially every single one of these colors was painted using red, yellow, green, blue, green, white, and black. And varying degrees of water, of course, okay? Now, which of these is your favorite? Which of these do you think is the best one? I would love to know your thoughts in the comments. And think about it like this, too. It's like, which of these is right for your customer? Oh, my customer is young, they like bright colors, they like something that looks fresh and vibrant, or my customer is a little bit more conservative, they don't really do loud colors, they like things looking a little bit more subtle, okay? So which one is your customer? Also, what season are you designing for? Which of these three colorways? Okay, so maybe for winter you put a sleeve on it and maybe for summer you make it a little shorter. But just the colorways, which one works for fall, which one works for spring or resort, okay? So you have to think about it in those terms because when it comes to color stories, it's not, it's not usually about ugly and beautiful. It's about what's right for the customer, what's right for the age, what's right for the season, what, what looks right with the base fabric you put on it. Which of these fabrics would look cool on a shiny fabric? And which of these would look cool on something nubbly and fuzzy? And then in terms of illustration, okay, when I am, if you watch my painting, my football padding collection thing videos, then you will have heard me say that I'm, I'm going to paint the hair at the very end because hair to me is like, okay, what's going to make the rest of this look good? I never start by saying, oh yeah, you know, I'm going to draw this blonde girl. It's very rare that I do an illustration project like that. It's really like, okay, this is the fabric swatch I was given, or this is the design that I'm painting. What's going to look good with this? What hair color is going to make this dress really pop out? Why don't you answer me in the comment section and you give me why you think so. It's like, Zoe, I think that a platinum blonde would look great on the blue dress because... Okay, I'd love to hear your thoughts because color theory is really about getting base information like, hey, this is a split complementary color scheme. 
taking that base information and analyzing it for your needs. Please do hit the thumbs up button if you found this video helpful and if you would like more color theory videos in the future. And share, subscribe. Oh, don't forget to hit the gray notification bell uh, because apparently you don't actually get notifications if you don't hit the bell, even if you subscribe. That's how it works, apparently. Go paint some swatches, go mix some colors, practice, hashtag always be practicing, and I will see you in the next video.